Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your July and August 2017 Prosperity Reading. It's Rena here and um, your fellow Sagittarian. So I'm trying to think about our 10th house. Our 10th house is Virgo. Virgo is going a little quiet, but there is going to be a Mercury retrograde there and that's happening on August 12th. So that could be a time, and it goes back into the ninth house eventually in early September. It goes direct on September 5th, and so some of um, some Sagittarians may be rethinking how their career connects to their spiritual beliefs or their philosophical beliefs. You know, are the two connected? I had just gone to a lecture the other day, and um, she was talking about that. You know, it's kind of like right livelihood. Is what you do really in alignment with your values and, and how you see yourself as a spiritual being? So that, that could be something that affects your career in a philosophical kind of way. Now let's talk about our second house of earned income. By the way, if you're Sagittarius rising, this also applies to you, especially this um, astrological information. The tarot... You know, if it, if you resonate with your rising sign a lot, then go for it. Uh, I know that some readers say your sun, moon, and rising sign. I am looking at it from the perspective of, you know, with the tarot, it's always a little a little bit of a a stretch in a sense because we're we're just artificially dividing these readings into signs and kind of trying to tap into the energy of the sign. But the rising sign is very important when we're talking about astrological transit. So it's a completely different animal. And to put them together like that can is where the confusion lies. So that's all I can say about that. But this might affect you if you're Sagittarius rising. I say may because these are still general. Okay, this is... This depends also on your degree of rising sign, your degree of sun sign. I don't want to confuse people, but it's the truth. Um, there's going to be a full moon in Capricorn, which is in our second house, on the uh, 9th of July at 17 degrees of Capricorn. Now, I heard somebody, who was it? Uh, one of these people on YouTube was talking about what a full moon brings, you know, what it represents. And sometimes people say, well, the full moon is about endings and the new moon is about beginnings. Well, not so fast. Sometimes the, the full moon is a time when everything that you have put into motion comes to fruition. So that can be a time of great financial increase if you've been working at something and then you reap the rewards of it. So... Don't think, oh my God, I'm going to lose my job on, on uh, July 9th because it could be, it, it might not, it could be f the fur furthest thing from the truth, okay? So that's something to look forward to, actually. We have a lot of activity in the fifth house of creativity. Uh, the North Node is there for the next year and a half. But this can also be about new beginnings in business, uh, your own business, I should say. So when I say new beginnings, there are going to be two new moons within a month, which is a rarity, in Leo. The first being at zero degrees of Leo, pure potential, on July 23rd. I think that's a great time to plant the seeds of intention because the second one will actually be during a solar eclipse. And even that is considered a very... Um, unstable period of time but in addition to that there's a mercury retrograde so that uh, that's a double whammy and that may not be a great time to start things but definitely in September when things start to settle down and, and mercury goes direct that could be a time when um, if you've if you've started something and maybe you started it in uh, in uh, July it really comes into its own so uh, these these solar eclipses can last for quite a while they can um, they can be uh, present for um, the energy can can um, play out for like six months or so so it's exciting so this is going to be a and, and because of the north node being in Leo too it's like this divinely guided 
um, creative project or your creative project may be in your own business and it feels like it's destiny so that's exciting this is going to be a simple three card uh, tarot spread in addition I'm picking a couple of Oracle cards and a law of attraction card okay oh love it that's our card this is Jupiter's card the wheel of fortune I love that card woo I love these cards all of them I really do I'm not lying I mean these are beautiful cards and then we have the earth magic deck pick a card from this <laughs> guess which one I got fire or fire signs so that's perfect apropos I looked at the bottom card because in an, when I did another sign, I think I just had the decks turned upside down for a minute. And I'm shuffling right now, but I didn't want to pick the deck upside down. <laughs> Guess what I got? I got it upside down anyway. <laughs> uh, you gotta love it. And I hardly ever get upside down cards now, and I've, and I've gotten it twice today, so this is kind of weird. But we do have a... Um, retrograde so that might be kind of going along with that and then I said I would pick a a law of attraction card which I kind of have to look away because these are all they've got the theme on both sides so I have to look away from that faith I think that I get this for another sign I'm just going to read this right now love those colors I have faith that I can manifest the wealth and prosperity I desire and so it is. Okay. So let's begin with the tarot. This is a card that is connected to Jupiter, the Wheel of Fortune. Pretty self-explanatory. This is alignment. This would have been in the past position. So coming into July, I mean um, August, for whatever reason, um, well, no, what am I saying? I mean, this is for July and August. So coming into the month of July, there is this feeling of being aligned in for whatever forever reason you feel that way. And maybe it, maybe it takes a while for you to, to really get there. Oh, you know what I should have said too is that Mars is going to be um, going into your fifth house of um, where all this other energy is on July 21st. And so... Because Leo is a uh, sister fire sign to us, there is that sense of alignment because all of these good things are happening with this, this trine aspect. And I think there are, there's like a fire trine, you know, with the transits, and I don't know exactly which ones. I'm sure Uranus might be engaged because Uranus is in Aries. So there may be just like... Um, especially as we get into Leo towards the end of the month, uh, Sagittarians may start to feel more like themselves and more like uh, they are raring to go. And this could be in the, in the business that you are creating for yourself or some kind of creative project especially. So we have, for the current position, the Ace of Swords, this is a card of seeing things very clearly and making those new beginnings in a very decisive way without any kind of doubts that you're doing the right thing. There's a real sense of um, forward movement with this card. But, you know, since Swords connect with thought, it's there's no sense of, like, doubt and, and, and nagging uh, feelings of, of um, doubt that something is not going to be right. You're just feeling like it's destiny, and that's what the North Node is as well. It's a sense of destiny. And then we have for the, the, the outcome, the Fool. This is the zero, and of course the new moon is at zero degrees of Leo. So that might be that, where you're planting these seeds. You have no idea like where it's going to take you, but you know it's going to be an adventure and you're down with an adventure or you're up for an adventure. Okay, and I love that. I really love the full card. Um, as it's one of my favorite cards because of that, because it's unknown. 
and because it's adventurous, because it's not being too fear fear based and unsure of yourself, there's a sense of certainty, and that's also mirrored by the. Uh, um, well, I'm not going to say that the fool is a sense of certainty; it's a sense of faith. But the Ace of Swords, I feel, is a sense of like a solid thought behind something and feeling like it's meant to be. For the fire card that I have already, I've already pulled that up. It's passion. That's what it talks about. Okay. And I'll read what it says. And I already know, I think I got this for another sign. I think I got this for Aries. I mean, uh, Gemini. <clears throat> what are your inner passions? What turns you on? What ignites that inner flame, that creative spark? When you feel de devoid of passion, consider what is missing in your life. It is most likely an absence of fire in your belly, something that makes your heart beat faster and quickens your breath, breathing. Passion is not something that comes from outside of you, although some events and circumstances can trigger it. It is an intensity of feeling, whether quietly experienced or enthusiastically expressed. Passion can simply be a strong feeling or the sensation itself can be so powerful that it motivates you to act. This is too often associated exclusively with sexuality, which is certainly one way of experiencing it, yet it limits its meaning and demeans the broader possibilities. Open yourself to the truth of what you are passionate about and find a means to express it. I, I really love this because when there is that Mercury retrograde on, on um, August 12th, this will be in the 10th house of career. This means that you're going to be reviewing in your mind your career aspirations, okay? And it will dip back into that ninth house, and that is like your values. And it's like, for Sagittarius, one of our values is living a life of passion, okay? As fire signs, we are like the cheerleaders of the zodiac, and so people look to us to feel inspired, okay? And so when we're not feeling inspired, we have a hard time imbuing others with that. And I'm, I'm, you know, called to recall this um, debate or something. I, I don't know. It might have been Teal Swan. I'm not sure. But she was talking about, you know, charging money for spiritual pursuits because that was something I struggled with for a long time, like, you know, even charging for spiritual readings and stuff. Because to me, it was like if it's spiritual, there is no price tag. And I do believe that to some degree, but, you know, because it is priceless, okay, whatever it is that you're doing. But, um, I mean, I do have free, free readings here where people can get the same kind of thing. Um, but one thing that she, I think she mentioned was if you are not, if you're like doing the kind of work that I'm doing and that she does, a spiritual teacher or whatever you want to call it, and you're doing it for free, you still have to support yourself, right? So if you work at a place, let's say you work at a retail store, which I did, you know, for several years, and you're working in this environment, and then you're doing this as like a hobby to help people. How are you, you know, are you going to be inspired by that behavior and that association to be able to, are you going to be able to help people more if you're exposed to that on a constant basis or less? And chances are, it will take a lot out of you to have to do that. So you can justify, you know, uh, charging for your services because you know that it will give the person the best possible product, whether it's a free reading or whether it's a paid reading. So the same thing applies for you in your career, whatever your career is, Sagittarius. And you may be doing something that has to do with uh, spiritual teaching or pursuits, or you may be doing, maybe you work in a bank, but even if you worked in a bank, and let's say you enjoy working at a bank, you still have to feel that that is something that, that really is, um, you know, burning, a burning desire in your soul. And if it isn't, it doesn't mean that you quit tomorrow because you may have bills to pay. It means that you honor your passions and don't just discard them and think that they're just silly child 
um, children's dreams, that you really believe that um, um, they are for, for <laughs> I just thought of something, that you really believe that they are for um, y your life and, and you take them seriously. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking about um, something my partner told me, and he is also a Sagittarius, and he works with somebody, and this man's father, he worked for this man whose father told him once, dreams are for women and children, son. <laughs> I mean, can you get any more cynical than that? And I think the guy was a Sagittarius, too, so that's, I, I just, like, flashed on that when I was talking to you. But then the... the <laughs> Hey, dreams are for women and children, son. Um, so I got this in the reverse position, time for a nap. So maybe it means that it's time to not have a nap. So let me look. Because I think um, the wisdom, this is from the wisdom of the Oracle deck, and they do have reverse cards, I believe. So this is, what is that, 24... And interestingly, if I want to go into the number 24, that's the day after the new moon in Leo, the first one. So that might be a message for some of you. In this book, uh, The Wisdom of the Oracle, um, the reversed cards are called protection messages. So it's kind of like, you know, a uh, cautionary message. You are a human being, not a human doing. Is it possible you're suffering from workaholism? Could you be the one who thinks it's your job to save everyone, to be there for everyone, and to go, go, go until you can barely see straight? You've gone as far as you can. You've worked hard and nourished people and projects, but now you are an empty well and have no reserves for others or for yourself. Don't let your ego keep you going full speed when your body and spirit need rest. Exhaustion is calling you to stop what you're doing altogether and take a break. If you don't, the appearance of this card could portend a possible illness that stems from being totally overwhelmed. You will feel like a new person if you take that break. Do it now. Okay. Well, that's really nice. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, Sagittarius. I know I have. And um, if you'd like a personal reading... And I have different types. I have career readings, if that's something you're interested in. I have life path readings, which are more of the uh, more of the spiritual, but it does combine it with the practical. Um, I have those, and I have love readings. I have all kinds of readings, needle chart interpretations. So uh, please click on the link below to take you to rainandmoonastrology.com, which is my website. Otherwise, I wish you all the best in July and August. Bye.